Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we are doing a third and hopefully final installment on how to connect two X32s, or in this case, an X32 rack at monitors and a X32 full size at front of house um, so that we can have a front of house and monitor console connected. Uh, Now, we've done two videos on this in the past where we connected it in a different way because we were adding on to an existing installation. In this video, I'm going to show you the revised way that I'm doing it now that gives us a little bit more options. Um, And this should be the final installation of this. I'm going to keep the other two videos up um, because there is some more information there. I'm going to try to make this video very quick. Um, But in particular, uh, the part two or part two video, there's some really good information there that I'm going to kind of skim past just a little bit for the sake of brevity on this one. So connection-wise in this video, we're going to have a front of house X32 full size. Through the A port, we'll be connected to the monitor rack on the A port. Um, The monitor rack will connect from its B port to the A port of a 32-channel digital snake. So either the Midas M32 or the Behringer S32. Uh, It doesn't really matter. They'll be the same for this application. We will be using the 16 outputs on the S32. Um, The first eight will be an extension of the X32 rack. The X32 rack has eight XLR outputs. So we will use the first eight of the S32 as nine through 16 from the X32 rack. And then the last eight will be our outputs from front of house uh, so we can connect to our speakers and all that good stuff. Um, When we connect these, we are basically going to be sending through. So the information for the S32 is going to connect to the rack, but it's going to go through the rack to the X32 at front of house. X32 is going to set gain uh, and master clock. It will then send those 32 channels along with an additional six uh, that we'll talk about through to monitors, and then monitors will connect again to the S32 to send all of our outputs um, out of that. So with that said, let's hop in and take a look. I am using the old version of the editing app. The only reason I'm using this is because it is um, a little bit easier to visualize because it actually looks like the screen on the X32. Um, So if you're using the new app, uh, don't fret. It's the same information. It just may be in a different location. Uh, So we've got a front house uh, scene, and then you'll notice when I flip over, this is our monitor scene. We're going to start with monitors because we're going to follow our signal flow from the digital snake through monitors, through front of house, and then back again. Um, So let's start with our routing. Uh, Again, the uh, front of house console is connected to our A port, and then the um, digital snake is connected to our B port. So what we want to do is we want to pass information from B through to A. So these are all initialized scenes. Um, So we're looking at the default settings. We want to change um, these outputs to be, I'm going to just scroll up on these first four. Um, We're passing through from B to A. So we're going to change this to B1 through 32. We don't really need to worry about 33 through 48, um, so we can just leave that alone. But while we're on this mixer, let's go ahead and set up for it to be a slave to front of house. So I'm going to go to setup. On the global tab here, we're going to change the sync to be on our port A, which is connected to front of house. Uh, I'm going to go to preamps and change the HA remote, head amp remote, to also be on port A. This means that front of house will have gain control and um, the X32 rack when it's connected will have trim control, which I find to be the best way to do this. Some people might want to do it the other way around. Um, But if you don't have a monitor engineer at uh, monitors all the time, it makes more sense to give this control to front of house. Okay, now that all that's done, let's switch back over to front of house. We want to receive those channels. So we'll go to routing. Our home tab is basically our inputs. As a default, they're set to local. We're going to change those to receive A1 through 32. So these are the channels that are coming from the digital snake. They're being passed through X32 rack and then coming to us over here. Now, I'm going to set up six additional outputs that we're going to send to monitors. Um, I'm not going to set up all six. Uh, I'll go ahead and set them up and, and label them, but 
I'm just going to set up a front of house talk back for the purpose of this video. Again, if you go to the part do video, I'll link it in the comments. Um, that will show you some more interesting options that you can do. Uh, so let's go down to our buses. And we're going to change these to be the first six buses here are going to be our outputs going to um, our monitor console. So let's go set up, scribble strip. This first one will be front of house talkback. And then we'll do two months two. We'll copy and paste action. Three, four, five, and six. Um, let's go ahead and set all these to Unity Gain. So I'm going to go to home, set everything to zero. All right, I'm going to route my talk back to this bus by going to monitor, talk back A, and set that to bus one. So now when I uh, talk on my talk back mic with the button pressed down, it will go to talk back one. We now need to route that to our monitor console. Um, as a default, this is actually already done um, in a lot of ways, but let me go over it in case you're adding this to a new scene. If we go to routing, and then outs one through 16, as a default, these, um, these should mostly all be set to your buses. So you can see output one is coming from our one front house talk back, and then two, three, four, five, and six, that's all correct. They're all set to post fader. The other thing with this setup, we're using outs nine through 16 um, to go to our digital snake. So again, as a default, output 16 is our main right, 15 is our main left. So anything that you have with matrices or outputs, you're going to just need to make sure that they're on 9 through 16 and not necessarily 1 through 8. So now let's route all this back to monitors. Now this is where things get a little bit funny, and this has to do with the, um, the way AES50 works on um, the Behringer products. If you look at the Home tab, Almost everything works in groups of eight, um, with the exception of the Oxen remap, which we're going to talk about on the monitor console. The Oxen remap allows you to change um, your auxiliary inputs instead of being the quarter inch inputs on the back of the board or the rack to being either two, four, or six inputs from either local, A, B, or your card. But it only works on the earlier numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to send all this information plus our six uh, buses, but we're going to offset everything by, in this case, 17. Uh, it's all going to make sense in the end, but it looks a little funky right now. So we're connected to monitors through the A port. So starting on 17, not one, output 17, we're going to send back the information that we got from the monitor console. So let's just scroll up here. We're going to send A, 1 through 32, but coming down outputs 17 through 48. On our outputs 1 through 16, these are actually already correct with the default. We want to send outs 1 through 16 um, from this board. So again, 1 through 6 of 1 through 8 will be our buses that we just set up down here. And then 9 through 16 will show up on our last set of 8 uh, on the DL32 or S32 when we get that all connected. So we are really done with this console for now. So let's get back over to monitors. And now we need to receive all those inputs that we just set up. So we're going to go to routing, home, and again, we're set to defaults. So our input one is going to come from inputs, uh, output 17 from front of house. 17 through 48. So in the end, it all works out. If I plug the kick mic into channel one on the snake, um, it will end up 
coming through input one at front of house. Front of house is then sending it out um, output 17. Output 17 is coming back into input one of our X32 rack. So no matter what, if you plug your kick into channel one, it'll show up on channel one on front of house and your monitor console. Um, so it just looks a little bit weird in the in-between. But the reason why we did that is because it allows us to do this. We're going to go to our aux in remap, and we're going to change this from being aux ins, which we have no use for those auxiliary inputs on the monitor console. We're going to change that to being A, 1 through 6. And now, these six buses that we set up in front of house are coming into our auxiliary inputs on this board. So we can go to our aux ins, and let's go ahead and relabel these. So we go to setup, scribble strip. This one is our front of house talkback. And then these are for later use. So we've got two from front of house. More copy and pastage. Three. Four. Five and six. And so now as someone who's listening to my monitor through uh, this console, if I were to turn up the front of house talk back in my mix, I would hear when the front of house engineer speaks into his or her talk back. So very cool. Gives us a, a lot of routing options on there. And again, check out the part two video to figure out some other cool things you can do with these other um, five sends from front of house to here. Uh, so finally, let's route uh, our new outputs for the 32-channel uh, snake. So again, routing. The snake is connected via the B port. As a default, these are the two that we're looking at here. Um, as a default, outputs 1 through 16 are coming out of the XLR outputs on the snake. Um, and right now, we're set to output 1 through 16 from the board. Well, we have one through eight will be coming from the outputs of the X32 rack in this hypothetical example. But I need some place that has physical outputs for nine through 16. So the first group of eight, I'm going to change those to be nine through 16 of the monitor console. Uh, now the nine through 16 of the digital snake, I want those to be the outputs from front of house. So I'm going to change that to be my A port nine through 16. So again, if we look over here, we're sending nine through 16. We're sending outputs nine through 16 of the front of house console to the uh, XLR connections on the digital snake. So that's how everything's connected on here. And we're done. We now have everything successfully connected. Of course, you can go through and relabel and uh, customize this as you want. But this works. It's very, very... Um, consistent, does a great job. Uh, this also means that at front of house, again, you can change your outputs uh, in one location to both receive and send card information. So if you wanted to do a virtual sound check without having to touch both consoles, you could set up a snippet to change your outputs um, and inputs on just front of house console and do a virtual sound check at both front of house and monitors. Um, so that's part of the reason why we did it in this kind of convoluted way, but it works very, very effectively. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, if you need some help with your church, uh, we can come out and help you locally at your church with this and with setup and training, any equipment that you might need. Um, we are very happy to help you out with that. Um, if that's something you need, you can contact me directly at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. Until next time. Have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.